at this point we're saving data that we're that the user is plugging in themselves manually they put the name of the comic they um, write some notes whatever I want to do a couple of things now that take advantage of the hardware on the person's device specifically the camera so I want to have the ability to take a photo of the comic and then also uh, to uh, scan a barcode I think we'll do barcode first so let's do this let's go to the web let's go to the web browser we're gonna do a search here the barcode scanner is not part of the standard set of of native tools so you can do a, a search for Cordova barcode scanner so over at cordova.apache.org that's the official website that has the, the like dozen built-in plugins the the capabilities that are very common such as taking a photo guys you can continue that in a moment if you need help so the built-in capabilities of vibration and sound and GPS we can get those from Apache Cordova this one while it relates to the camera has different functionality which is to scan barcodes and we'll be able to test this because on your computer there's a yellow sticker on the computer with a barcode so we have something to scan if you have something else too like I guess even my water right here this has got a barcode scanner so we'll be able to scan just about any kind of barcode these classic horizontal ones or like a QR code or just about any kind of barcode so to test it that's what we're gonna do now that requires then a plugin that is not one of the standard ones because not everyone needs to do this very often we searched here Cordova barcode scanner we get 75,000 results and hopefully the the top result that you get is, um, is this one here github phone gap plugin barcode scanner um, this one seems like it's almost the same thing this one's the npmjs but you should have a result hopefully the top result at github.com slash phone gap etc phone gap is another term for Cordova Cordova is remember that JavaScript library that translates plain old JavaScript into the correct language per device per platform um, phone gap is uh, I believe Adobe's version of Cordova since Cordova is open source different organizations have made sort of their own version <clears throat> so Cordova phone gap version um, the point of that is that whenever you look up any tutorials or plugins and such if you find a result that says phone gap plugin it's the same thing as Cordova I searched for Cordova barcode scanner and I got the phone gap one it's the same thing not a, it's not a big deal if you see one or the other if you see tutorials that say how to activate Bluetooth between two devices with a phone gap plugin well that's the same thing synonymous with Cordova so if you click on that first result it should take you over to github scrolling down phone gap plugin barcode scanner cross-platform barcode scanner for Cordova slash phone gap if it's if you're, at a, if you're at a different screen than this try to get to here I don't I can't vouch for the other ones this is the one that you should be at the the, the github result so installation we're gonna need to install this into our project in a moment and there's a couple ways to do it supported platforms this works on Android iOS Windows or, or your web browser if you've got a web camera the plugin is able to 
scan all of these different kinds of barcodes. And I, before learning about this, I thought there was like one kind of barcode. There's all of these other kinds. QR codes are the newer ones. The example is writing some JavaScript, cordova.plugins.barcodescanner.scan. There's a scan command. And we also have a result or error callback. The syntax is going to be different than phone uh, than pouch. This is a different team. But we're going to have a result or a success function. And in the example, an alert pops up. We got a barcode. The result is result.txt. So they're doing result instead of success. But then there is a text property of the barcode. What was the actual text encoded into the barcode? New line format. What was the the format? Was it in QR code? Was it in RS128 or, or whatever? And was the was it canceled trying to get the barcode? Yes or no? There might have been some sort of failure. So instead of failure, they're doing it as error. We'll we'll use failure and success to keep consistent because again, these things, these callback objects, can be named anything you want. But we're gonna we're seeing the difference here. There could be then in some sort of error and a little pop-up that will say what was the error. Further, their syntax is different than pouch because. You try to scan, you'll get either a success or a failure, and then you could feed it optional options here. You have all of these plus others that are listed in the documentation. If you're using a front camera, do you want to show the torch? Um, other parts of the world call it torch, but my, what, what do they mean by torch? Torch or flash? Your flash, your, your light on your camera. So if you ever see that, uh, someone calling it uh, your torch. Well, it's the light on your phone, your flash. We can turn on the the light. Um, other things, formats. This one can access QR codes or only PDF 417. Other things. This can also encode a barcode. We, we're not going to do that. You can create barcodes. All that we want to do is to um, to scan the barcode not create one. So we need to add this plugin before we go any further. Let's go back to our uh, Visual Studio and we're going to open the um, config.xml file. And we'll go to plugins screen. When you're in config.xml, here's all the common ones. Barcode is not here. It's not that common. So we need to do a custom installation, either by providing the plugin ID, the file that you've downloaded that you're going to sort of upload to your project, or an address on GitHub. The documentation of the plugin has all of them in terms of there's the git address or there's the plugin ID. If we were doing this in the command prompt, we would type the command phone gap plugin add the particular plugin. I want that one. So here in the installation on the first result or the first uh, code example, copy the unique ID for the plugin. Phone gap dash plugin dash barcode barcode scanner. So copy that, or just type what I'm about to type here under the plugin ID. Enter the ID. It's the one I just copied. Or it's phone gap dash plugin dash barcode scanner. Click next. It should then connect to the central repository where these things are stored. It should hopefully then give you the feedback. Okay, you're about to get the barcode scanner description. You can use the barcode scanner to scan different types of barcodes. If you get an error or something different than what I get, just confirm that it that you've got this scanner. Because the thing about Cordova, building apps via Cordova like we are, since it's open source, there's a lot of great variety of plugins. There's a lot of plugins to choose from. Uh, the, the bad news is there's a lot of plugins to choose from. You don't know which is the best one. You don't know which one is buggy. 
which one is buggy, which one works better than the others. So then I'll click Add. This is going to connect back to the main website, download the stuff. If you see something red, it'll probably OK. Eventually, it'll say OK, done. And you can confirm here the plugin was successfully installed. And under the Installed view, I now have the console splash screen whitelist and barcode scanner. The way we'll use the barcode scanner, we'll write some JavaScript to initiate the scanning of the barcode. And if you recall here, I'm just going to run this really fast. If you, if you recall, at the point where we're going to save the comic, that would be a good point there to also <coughs> scan the barcode. Now, uh, one of the downsides here. When you add new plugins and new uh, code and such, it takes a little longer for the second time to run. So, actually, let me. All I wanted to show was all I wanted to show was that in the in the screen where we're going to. In the screen where we're going to save the comic, we want to add a new button. Let's go back to the HTML file. We're going to go to our PG save comic. PG save comic to do add the barcode and photo fields eventually. So we're going to start to add one of them. In my case, line 180. We've got these labels and input fields for the for the uh, for that content. Bar barcode is going to be similar, but we'll do this in the optional field set. We'll create a horizontal rule, something to visually differentiate this. We've got optional publisher notes, horizontal rule. We'll have an input <coughs> of type text. Placeholder, we'll say barcode. ID will be in barcode. There's going to be a box here that will get populated by the barcode that I'm going to scan. In order to initiate that, I'll also have an input button, type button. value, it'll say scan barcode. That's what the button will say. ID BTN scan barcode. So there'll be an input box that will get filled in once the per person presses the button to scan the barcode.
Okay, so we're, we're, we're adding something new to our data. So far, we've had those six fields or so, five or six fields of name, year, publisher, etc. Well, now we're going to start to save a brand new piece of data. So the data from the past didn't have that field, but the data going forward will. Obviously, when this gets released to the public, it's no big deal because it's the <coughs> fi final version. It's the final version that has the barcode built in. But as we're beta testing this, um, there's going to be some undefined data because this was never saved. So in our JavaScript file, we need to do a few things. We'll go to our function to save comic. Actually, uh, prep comic. <coughs> the, uh, the data that we're saving into the database, there it is. We did that a while ago. It's all the different fields and values. All those values come from, when we go back to the top of that prep comics, a variable that checks the value of in title, a variable that checks the value of in notes. Well, we need something new. Now we've got in barcode. Now be very careful here. Remove that semicolon and, and add a comma because we're adding a new variable. Val in barcode. If you leave a semicolon, <clears throat> if you leave a semicolon here and don't put var here, you'll get an error because we have that semicolon there saying end of statement, I'm done making variables. And then suddenly you make a new variable, so that'll cause an error. You need a comma here, because comma, here's a new variable, which is equal to the jQuery selector ID in barcode.val, and then semicolon. Now we're done adding another variable here. We're done creating another variable. Okay, so if we've got then a new piece of data, we need to put that data into the variable, the JSON object, to then pass it into the database. So still inside of prep comic, <coughs> at the end, <coughs> now we've got a new field here. Since it's a new field, we need a comma, next field. What should we call the field where our barcodes are stored at? barcode yes let's keep it easy so we've got a brand new field in the database called barcode where the barcodes will be stored colon val in barcode no semi, no no comma or anything there but make sure you added a comma to notes because you've added a new field you'll get an error if you didn't put a comma there or put one there so now here prep comic is set up in a way to check what was stored into the box, the barcode, and then we'll then put it into the temp comic object, return it so that then we can pass it into the next function of save comic. That'll work as normal. It'll have now a brand new field. Okay, well, that's one side of the coin. This is the side of the coin of there's data to save into the database. The other side of the coin is let's um, initiate scanning the barcode. So here we will need to create an object 
for the button to scan the barcode. We will need the event listener to wait for that button to be clicked to run a function. And then run a function to actually run the scanner JavaScript code. So what we've done before. Let's go back to where we've got all of our variables. Control home to jump further to the top, faster to the top. That's fine where we've got our variables, and we're going to create an element for the button that scans the barcode. LBTN scan barcode. Oh, then our note uh, object for scanning for the button for to scan a barcode. So we've got a button in the HTML file with an ID, and we're creating an object of it. We've done that several times. Okay, so that button needs to initiate a, uh, a function. So we'll go to where we've got all of our event listeners and create one for that button. end will take me then to the end so I'm in the general area to do a handler for uh, when a person clicks the button to scan a barcode dollar L BTN scan barcode on it's just a plain old button so nothing fancy it's an on click run a function and scan barcode. We need to define that function, so a little bit higher up after the edit comics info we'll say third party plugin to scan barcodes found at put the web address in a moment So that's the usual. We've got a function definition, the ending comment, a little console output. Uh, for my notes here, I'm going to put the link to that barcode scanner so that uh, you can go back and read the further documentation, how it works. I've got a plan for it, but then if you want to use it for different purposes, uh, I'll put it into the notes right there. So that's just the address that we were just looking at. <coughs> You don't have to type that manually, of course. Just copy and paste it if you still have the address open. If not, don't worry about it, because it's just a comment. For our notes here, we can say syntax. The way that this works is you've got, it has to be in the format of Cordova. Cordova uh, dot plugins. 
dot barcode scanner capital S dot scan So this this thing here completely is the command to to scan the barcode. We've got the Cordova object plugin property barcode scanner property scan method. We've got scan and create or scan and encode whatever they've called it. A way to read a barcode, a way to create a barcode. Well, when we do the scan, we have success callback. We get a failure callback and get options. That's the general syntax. Notice that when we were using pouch, it has it had the options first, comma, and then it had failure and uh, function and then failure and success. Here it's success first, then failure, then options. to actually do it <coughs> console or sorry uh, Cordova dot plugins dot bar code scanner it might not automatically write it for you so be careful that does have to have a capital S barcode scanner dot scan I'm gonna break this apart it's gonna be very hard to read on one line so we'll say end of dot scan So we have a function for success. We have a function for failure. And we have our options. So let's work backwards, because we're used to having the options, then the failure, then success. They have to be in this order. It has to be in this syntax, but we'll just fill it in uh, backwards. The options that we're going to put in are we're going to say prompt some message, because the way this will work is we'll turn on the button for the scanner, and then on screen here, you can give it whatever message you want to tell the person uh, about what you're about to do. So we'll have it say, place the comics barcode in the scan area. Place the comics barcode in the scan area. It's going to have like kind of like a, a scanning target. It, it might not be obvious for many people, what am I supposed to do now? So our message there, the prompt that will appear there is to tell them, put the barcode within the, the guides, within the scan area. I'm going to have more than one option. So here's another example. I'm going to break this apart also. Curly brace here and here, because then I'm going to do comma for some more options. There's one called result display duration. Capital D, capital D. Result display duration. What this one's about is how long to display the result. When you scan it, you'll see like the barcode for a moment, 2,000 milliseconds. It's going to show you the barcode for two seconds. And then it's going to proceed in the, in the app. Comma, another option. Orientation. <laughs> landscape. The 2000 is not in quotes because it's a number. This 
option expects a numeric value, and numeric values are without quotes. And here I'm saying that the orientation of my camera is going to be landscape, sideways, because barcodes are often wide. One more disable success beep false. No quotes on that one because that's the true or false. That's the Boolean. It's the it's the data type of is it true, is it false? Not the word true or false, but the idea of true or false. So here um, it's going to scan the comic and it's going to beep. Disabled success beep false. So it will beep after you've successfully scanned the barcode. If you don't want the sound, you set it to true. But these are the options that I'm passing into the scanner what the message is to the person, how long to display the result before we get back to the rest of our app. The camera's going to be in landscape mode, and it'll beep once you scan. In case of a failure, we're going to have an alert. <clears throat> Say scanning failed. And whatever failure message it kicks back to us. Like maybe your your hand <clears throat> your hand shook or out of power or something. Success is the more complicated one, and I'm going to break that apart. And I'm not writing any, any comments in between these things, because that, uh, that could cause problems, because uh, these are the various uh, options of the command, and the comment might not play nice there. But upon a successful result, we don't need the if-else for this, because it's separated automatically into a success or failure, so no if-else but we needed to do something. Uh, we'll do a few things here. We'll say console. Type of barcode, success.format. Successfully scanning the barcode will return the object success, and it has various properties. One of them is format. What kind of barcode did I just scan? It's not important to the user. We could save it into the database. <clears throat> We'd have to go back to our, um, you know, uh, function prep comic and make a new field and all of that. No big deal. But we're not going to save that. We're just going to put it to the console. And then what we're going to do is, into the console, we're also going to display what was, what was the data, data in the barcode, is success.text. The data that it's encoded into the barcode, whether it's numeric, text, URLs, whatever, uh, that, that is a text property of the success object. Well, that's what I care about saving into the database. I'm putting it here in the console just to confirm as we work and we're confirming is the data that's getting saved what I think it is? Why do I keep getting undefined when I view it? Oh, I can confirm that I didn't properly scan the data. So the way we, we use the data, set the value of the input field to the data that was scanned. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I wanted to put a comment here to remind us, but because it's JSON data, we shouldn't. Good point. Uh, we can put it up here. Set the value of the input field to the data that was scanned. Yeah. 
So the data that we're about to put into the input field, well, our input field is, here's the example again where, just the, the quick way, we don't have a specific uh, object uh, created, not, not quite necessary, this is just a quick operation. So jQuery selector to select the input field with this particular ID. We will set its value, so dot val, to set a value into the field. And the, and the value that's being saved is success.text. Up here, we're just displaying it in the console so that we can see it. But then we're actually putting it into the input field in this line here. So the actual, what actually happens here, we had a lot of setup. We needed to create the button and the input field in the HTML. We needed to, well, before that, step zero, we needed to add the plugin in the config XML. We needed to create the input field and the button in the HTML. We needed to create the uh, object for that button, the event listener for the button, finally the function, so five things. Then in the function, there's our syntax, success, failure, options. And what needs to happen is if we successfully scan the code, put the text into that field, so that then when the person clicks Save Comic, that field is no longer empty. And the barcode gets saved to the database. I'm going to save it and run it. And this is the example where you're not really going to get much out of it if you look at it in the, in the browser. You do want it in, the, in a real device. <laughs> Because these real devices have actual cameras. So let's see if mine wants to behave here. Go ahead and save it and run it and see if you can get your barcode scanner. Remember, you've got barcodes on top of your computer, or maybe you might have it on something else. Try to see if you can scan a barcode. see here <clears throat> so I've got my um, my device uh, I need to do a quick account vfv.com Okay, so I'm going to go into the save comic screen. I've got the uh, I've got the fields that I've worked with before. I'm going to click scan barcode. Uh, allow this app to take pictures and record video. Yes, so it's got the permissions popping up there. Click on that. So then the screen changes to be a camera right there, and um, I've got a barcode on this one. My prompt at the bottom. Uh, I wrote plan instead of place, and no one said anything. Place the comics barcode in the scan area. Yeah, I wrote plan. I meant place. No one said anything. Okay, so place the barcode in the scan area. And I see a little red laser like the Terminator or something, so then I uh, put it on the <coughs> barcode. There was a little beep. It captured it for two seconds. It was visible on screen for two seconds. If I pay attention over here into my um, into my console, also function barcode is running. Type of barcode is a code thirty nine. The data that was there was one zero zero four etc. And I see here one zero zero four etc. It kicks me back to the app, and it says just stuff behind the scenes here. We returned to the app, because that's um, stuff happening with the on pause, on resume. So it filled in the barcode screen. 
Uh, I'm going to save a comic. Save. Comic saved. If I go to view comic, I've got one comic saved. I go to the info. Um, and then I've got the data popping up on info. So showing comic R. almost there in terms of after I try to show a comic I, uh, I go to the show comic screen barcode is empty because I had here on my notes to do add barcode info on my show comics info I have populate paragraph 0 1 2 3 4 but I'm missing pop paragraph 5 to show the barcode success.barcode. Now that I've got a barcode field. So here's another example where I can duplicate this line. Just click anywhere inside of it. Control D duplicate. Now we've got paragraph 5 <coughs> where I'm displaying the barcode. And this was when we were displaying the data by successfully retrieving it success.note success.barcode now that I've got a brand new barcode field there's data to retrieve uh, on all of the other comics where you never saved a barcode you'll get undefined because we never saved a barcode there so this is in show comics info a new field to display So when you run it on the real device, you'll get the console in, in uh, Visual Studio. But remember, you can still use the Google Chrome console to view the output of a device. I'll remind you about that in a moment. But I'm going to run the, the app again with, the, with that change there. So of course then, to do, add image. So eventually, uh, after we do the scan a photo, we'll then display the photo on screen. So someone scanned a barcode. Good. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna use the um, the Chrome console. Remember, you can uh, open up any any view anything in the console in Chrome. Then you can go to the three dots, more tools remote devices. So I can control my device if it's compatible in Chrome, in the Dev Tools, more tools, remote device. If I've got a debuggable app, it will appear down here. So my my tablet is plugged in. I've got my debugged debuggable app inspect. So now I've got the um, I've got the tablet running the, the app and I should be able to control it here as well. Not completely, because once I switch over here to scan barcode, it, it's not able to display that here. Tab is inactive. And that's why I might see in the console that it says, we left the app, we exited the app, because we went over to a different part of the app. 
I'm going to scan a different barcode here on the water. I have noticed sometimes that if the barcode's a little too small, it can't fully capture it. Okay, there it is. So it shows it for two seconds. The console here said the type of barcode is UPCA. The data that was there was that. And it says it down there, 281053. Over here, 81053. We return to the app. The field has been filled in for me. <clears throat> so I'm going to save this comic. Comic saved. View comic. Have a new item info and there's the barcode I, I scanned off of that water bottle so the barcode can the barcode scanner is retrieving the data from the barcode Okay, so um, I think um, time-wise it might be good to pause the lecture here uh, to confirm that all of the code of the day works so far. And we'll have our, our lab time, and then when we come back we will do taking a photo of the, of the item. So the barcode scanner has one task, and then the camera app has another, app, uh, another purpose. So we'll scan a photo of the product and then when we uh, look at the when we go to view view comic the photo will be there and it'll be data embedded into the database as well so we'll pause at this point I'll put the code uh, into the network folder we'll do some lab time and make sure it works up to this point if you need any help call me over when we come back next time we'll do camera <clears throat>